Uh, my name is Joseph from AJ Associates, um, and we're speaking to the lovely Melissa. Yay. Hello. From ML Property Venture. Hi, everyone. Okay, so we decided to start a podcast and help property developers and, you know, anybody in that arena to discuss all the potential pitfalls and the nuances in the property industry. Okay, so what, what do you think about that? That's like, you know. Yeah, this is it. I think there's definitely a need for it. Um, I'm sure you, you're the same, you know, I have some of the same conversations over and over again. You know, I, I have landowners come to me and literally, yeah, same questions. So yeah, I think, I think it is good that we kind of get somewhere where centralize it and give everyone the, the answer to their questions, really. Most definitely, most definitely. So you know what, I'm excited. At the end of the day, you know, there's, we've always been, we've had various conversations about starting some sort of podcast about to reach out to people in the property industry. And due to all sorts of commitments and running a business, you know, it's just not happened. Literally. But we're, we're gonna make sure that today is the day that it actually happens and, you know, say to our viewers, yeah, all the experience and all the potential queries and concerns they may have in and around of architectural projects and say, for example, property development in general. So yeah. my background, you know, I'm a qualified executive architect. Um, tell me a little bit more about yourself, Melissa. Yeah, so ML Property Venture, we kind of started focusing on finding sites, well, finding properties for investors. And as time has gone on, we've started to find sites, mainly in Essex, but that seems to even be kind of branching out as well. So we have quite a few sites at the moment, um, and this is, we speak to you about them. So sometimes we have landowners who have sites that don't have planning, so then we speak to Joseph, speak to Joseph's team and kind of take them through. Um, sometimes they want to sell with planning and then we, we work with people, we work with buyers who, who are looking for those types of sites. So, yeah, a lot of our work, I, I feel, is quite connected, really. Most definitely. So Melissa said that perfectly. So once Melissa used to have a chat with myself, Joseph from AJ Associates, what we typically do, we take um, contentious planning applications and then discuss with their local authorities, liaise with them, move them in, move them forward until there's some sort of planning decision. And then we progress it further in order to do the project delivery. And this involves coordinating with a wider team from architect, the planning consultants to um, project managers to uh, say party wall surveyors, mechanical engineers, civil engineers. And also we have a framework of contractors so we have a framework of 50 contractors on our framework and say, for example, we would tender out to them for each project. We've worked on over a thousand projects to date. And typically we would also put together the contract administration to make sure that the owner, the client and the contractor have a formal building contract together to make sure that the project is completed, you know, with a commencement date and com completion date as well as a breakdown in regards to the scope of work and as well as the quality that will be integrated in the tender package that will also be provided for building control if needs be or the tender pack for the contractor to provide an adequate breakdown. So that's just a quick synopsis wow. of the type of projects or the type of works that we do. But we specialise in things from commercial to residential to hospitality, you know, even to healthcare and community centres. So it very much varies. And typically we Can have ask? We, we have a lot of scenarios whereby um, clients may only have a certain amount of um, funding for a particular type of project. And then we will engage with them with a the funding associate in order to get more funding, in order to do bigger projects and just think bigger, you know, think bigger. So that's a little bit more about us. Uh, Melissa? Amazing. So can I ask, just because you do cover quite a few different areas, do you have a, a favourite? Do you prefer one type of project over another? The project that pays on time. 
<laughs> you know, so, um, you know, for me, uh, the most important thing is making sure that the team are busy and the team is occupied and they're cracking on with existing projects throughout their tenure. That's the most important role that I feel. So I, I, it's just something that, you know, most people might say all sorts, but at the end of the day, um, architecture is a business. Um, the majority of the time, we have to make sure that we're, we're we're putting projects on a conveyor belt and taking the client on a journey and moving them from A to B in a seamless manner and in a highly immersive manner as well, because sometimes you might have some clients that are highly well-versed in this, and then you're going to have some clients that are inexperienced. But irrespective of that, you know, we will still follow our standards in order to, you know, move the project from inception to completion. Uh, all dependent on the scope of work for varied particular type of projects. Of course. Wow. So a common question that I get asked actually is, is on budgets and how do I, so when I present someone with, with a project, we, we talk about timelines and we talk about budget in relation to those timelines. So how do you kind of ensure that, oh, Oh, see, we've got, we got some, some screen sharing going on. Okay, this is, this is good. Oh, fantastic. Okay, so you did mention about budgets and um, we are huge advocates in regards to budget control. So mm -hmm. there's various ways for us to um, set up some sort of like budget control in regards to um, the type of tender packages that we control that we uh, provide you know for particular stages within our scope of works and what this will do it will give us a good understanding of say for example you know wall floors or ceiling packages that's just to give you you know an example and we would get a good understanding of the breakdown because we will be providing schedules manufacturing information specification the design intent as well as say, for example, um, say various different aspects. Yeah, bear with me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, bear with me. Let me just send that. Hi, Melissa, can you hear me? Yeah. Hello, so let me share my screen again. Yeah. All righty then. So, you know, in, in regards to budget sorcery, there's various different ways of achieving this goal. Mm -hmm. the, the main thing is just project management in relation to this and coordination. So ideally, we always like to be quite pedantic with our tender packages that we send to prospective contractors that are on the framework. And we would be expecting like a detailed breakdown of say, all the various schedules that we have within this tender package. So we know exactly how much it's going to cost. And as you can imagine, sending any project to a group of contractors is almost like going to Asda, Waitrose or Lidl. You know, yeah. they're all going to come back with different prices for the same scope of works that you've sent them, right? So ideally, we need to guide the client and say, look, listen, I know this particular individual might have a high um, cost, construction cost here with labor, mm -hmm. right? But this guy might be a bit too low the market value for this is X. So, you know, so in a way we have to help guide them accordingly in order to assist them along this journey. 
And on top of that, we also want to make sure that the expectation that the client has and what the contractor has in regards to building out that is managed. Because mm -hmm. as you can imagine, a contractor might just want to say, I will do this in three months. We know that it might take them at least nine months. So we're going to bring them on a the table and say, hold on, hold on. This isn't about impressing the client. It's about honesty and the integrity of your breakdown and your commencement and completion day. Are they realistic? You know, because we worked on quite a lot of projects. So when we hear something that's a bit off, we can turn around and say, yeah, we do not feel as if it would take you that long or you could deliver it that quick. Okay. That's um, interesting. Do you have those honest conversations? That's really good. Yeah. So the most important thing is just having a candid conversation, as we like to call it, highly candid. Yeah. You know, no, but everybody wants everything to move in a straight line. So everything that needs to be considered prior to during the pre-construction period during the tender process is highly important and constructions that they have prior to construction is much better than a conversation in the middle when there's a problem that needs some sort of resolution on site okay yeah. all right uh do you have any other further questions no 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 all right okay yeah, so that's you know you know that's just a little brief uncovering of the mystery of creating a dream dwelling and how you know various you know consultants and experts can assess assist you know the client in regards to that matter so that's just a little bit of that but um yeah no so today was quite a nice little introduction mm -hmm. and I feel as if there's so much more in this sphere of development you know moving project from A to B and Sometimes it's just nice to have like, you know, an executive bunch of consultants that can move projects from A to B and you know, are well versed in this. So, you know, without yourself, Melissa, you know, able to have these initial conversations or even reach out to them, it, you know, it becomes, you know, it'd be, it'd be a different scenario altogether. So, you know, this is it. Conversations I feel cool. I feel like a lot of my job is kind of connecting, connecting people, connecting the right people, answering questions. So, yeah, that's what it's about. All right. OK, so what I'm going to do, we're going to say goodbye to our viewers in <laughs> relation to this. And um, say, for example, if anybody needs any further assistance on anything to do with architectural services and planning and, you know, property acquisition and land, Feel, feel free to continue viewing and watch out for our next podcast. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. And I say goodbye to our audience. Yes. And um, I am Melissa. We'll look forward to catching you in the future. Please yes, see you soon. to uh, subscribe and like, and uh, we'll take it from there.